Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Spiritual Connection Show. I'm your host, Katie Augustine. I am a transformation coach. I'm an energy healer. I'm a shamanic practitioner. And I'm the head of the Transformation Center located in Westport, Connecticut. You know, so in addition to the individual healing and coaching sessions that I do personally with, um, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, we also offer a variety of classes, workshops. Let's see what else. We have sound baths in the backyard when the, when the weather's nice, which is awesome. Um, we have a lot of classes this month. Right now we're recording in early January. So I'm going to put up our website and you can check that out. All the events are there. You can register online and some of them are in person and some are on Zoom. You know, for example, the first, no, the second Tuesday of every month on Zoom, we have a shamanic clinic. And this is an opportunity for you to find out more about shamanism because you can sign up for just a little half hour session and you get an extraction healing during that time. And it's a community service that we offer for people, just like an introduction. So there's really no set fee. You know, you can make a donation if you want. So go on the website and check that out. It's just Transformation Center CT, the CT for Connecticut.com. All right. So, you know, all, all of the things that we do, I just want to add this. It's really meant to help you, you know, get to who you are, discover who you are. And then if there's any healing or growth, you know, that you want to look into, we're here for you. So anybody is welcome. We start where you are, beginners especially welcome. So the, the Spiritual Connection Show, as I said, is all about connection because that's one of my core values. I just love meeting new people, finding out what they're about, you know, introducing them to you so you can learn from them about their journey and really, you know, what's in it for you too, you know, what they have to offer, all sorts of good stuff. Yeah, so I'm really excited tonight that I have two special guests, not just one. Yeah, so it's Jim Griffith and Emily Liu. Hi, guys. Welcome. Hey, Katie. How are you? Hi. Great. Thanks for being here. So I'm just going to introduce y'all, and then we'll get into our little conversation. Okay. So I'm going to put up your slide. Yes. So Jim and Emily, yes, from the Epic Love Institute. So they are life partners, and they're the co-founders of the Epic Love Institute, where they help couples and singles over 40 build their dream relationships. I mean, how cool is that? I just love it. So, uh, you know, Jim and Emily are the rare couple that works as a team to coach other couples using the evidence-based internal family systems spiritual healing and transformation model. It's also called IFS. You've probably heard of it. As well as another methodology called intimacy from the inside out or IFIO. And this applies IFS to couples relationships. So we're going to hear all about that in a few minutes. And the other thing they're doing currently is they're building a series of online courses to make this spiritual healing available more broadly. And they're gonna start with a, a series focused on saving your marriage. So um, I understand that's a work in progress. So you can find out more on their website, epicloveinstitute.com coming up shortly. It's not there yet, but keep checking. Um, yeah, so before answering the call to become relationship surgeons, I love that term, they both had successful corporate careers. So we're, you know, we're probably not going to hear a lot about that, but I just want to give you a little capsule. So in January of 2020, that sounds like right before the pandemic hit, um, Jim retired from a 37 year career as a high tech executive, strategist, and entrepreneur to pursue this encore career as a relationship coach, which is just terrific because he clearly has a lot to offer. And so Emily was a pharmaceutical rep for Pfizer for 27 years. <laughs> I love this. She accidentally found her life's calling. You know, that's sometimes that's really is how it happens, although I don't believe in accidents. Um, and this was in 2012. 
and she founded Soar to Greatness Now, LLC, which was the predecessor to Epic Love Institute. Emily has also written two books on the application of IFS to resolve personal and professional challenges. All right, so let's just jump right in, you guys. Thank you for being here. Yeah, it's a pleasure. We're looking forward to the conversation. Yeah. Yeah, so you you know in advance that I always ask my guests to start by telling us a little bit about your spiritual journey, like how you got to where you are, anything you want to share, really. So you guys could take turns or do it together, however you want. You go first, if you'd like. You could go. Okay, I'll go first. Um, so I think like many of us, my spiritual journey started out in organized religion. I was raised as a Catholic and... Um, by the time I left for college, I had decided that that really didn't fit for me uh, for a variety of reasons. And um, through the course of my adult life, dabbled in lots of other flavors of organized religion and ended up in the Unitarian Church. Uh, we live here in Waltham outside Boston. And uh, so I'm a regular member of the, the local Unitarian Church. And um, the thing that I love about this particular uh, organization is it supplies the community part of spirituality in a way that allows each of us to uh, exercise, enjoy, experience our own spirituality. Um, there is no dogma or set of beliefs that one uh, signs up to, so to speak. You develop your own. So that's the nature of Unitarianism. And it just fit with me. Um, for a variety of reasons. And I've also um, discovered that um, through meditation that uh, Buddhism, which there's an active Buddhist group within our church, um, that Buddhism seems to be a pretty good fit as well. So uh, I guess if there were sort of a practice, that would be the one I'd most aligned with. So all of this sort of leads up to um, the time when I was really struggling in my relationships, prior relationships, and got into therapy. And my therapist introduced me to this methodology or this model called internal family systems. So I was the client in a setting receiving therapy through this model and just saw how powerful it was through my personal experience. And it's very much a spiritual model which is the thing that I love about it. Uh, and we can talk more about that. But uh, lo and behold, um, I'm in the dating process and I meet Emily. And on our first in-person date, we discover that she's an IFS practitioner and I have this experience. So we have this common language immediately. And that sort of allowed us to have sort of deeply intimate conversations that, uh, you know, that, that might not have happened otherwise. So, uh, so we can we can we can tell the rest of the story later. But let me let me pause and let Emily tell her story. Okay. Right. Thank so, you. So, so my my spiritual journey. I guess it started twenty years ago when I I think when I was about forty. I went into a depressive funk, and that was all activated by stuff that happened at work, and I didn't realize that that the reason why I felt so badly was because I was unconsciously playing out a, a negative dynamic that I had experienced growing up. And I was it was getting played out in this workplace. So I ended up seeking help um, from a psychiatrist and then she sent me immediately to a hypnotist. And I didn't know exactly like what? I, hypnosis is going to heal the, you know, this depressive part of me. And, and so I went through five or six hypnosis sessions, which I was able to get in touch with even a fetus fetal part of me when I was growing in my mother's womb. And there was some wounding that happened there through her energy that got passed down to me. And, and the hypnosis eventually did, did shift things um, but I really didn't understand what that was all about. And, and it was, it was when I got laid off from Pfizer, it, um, another corporate job didn't materialize. So I ended up going on my own. And, and then one thing led to another where I bumped into somebody at yoga and she said, you need to get trained in internal family systems. And I'm like, what? <laughs> um, and so I looked into it and 
And so got trained in it and like, wow, this is really the spiritual healing journey of understanding your, the different parts within you and your fears and insecurities. And, and, and so it's really understanding how your childhood wounds and adverse, any adverse events, it could be little or big that informs why we need things to be in a certain way. Um, and, and so that informs our needs and wants and our vulnerabilities. And, and so through going, going through the internal family systems process and doing therapy around it, and also getting trained in it and then coaching others in it. um, so, So that has really been the spiritual journey that I've been on not only for myself, but in guiding clients to become their best selves and getting unstuck, you know, watching them being the guide, being the container for them is also very rewarding um, because it it comes back full circle. So, so that's it in in synopsis. And then when I meet him, I didn't know I was going to be a couples therapist (laughs) and, 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 you know, I really did not, (laughs) so here's the interesting thing. Had I not been um, in a relationship with Jim and all of the hard conversations we had to have, I mean, it was 14 hard conversations in the first three months of dating. And, and it's because both of us had this the, this IFS tool of how to speak for our parts. If we had not had our conflicts, we had to resolve resentments that had to be talked about, you know, we would have no business being couples coaches if we're not living the kind of relationship that our clients ultimately want. So we take it from our personal experience of how do we resolve that? And clients come to us with the problems. They're like, we're experiencing this. And then, you know, both of us are like, oh yeah, you know, we've been there. This is, this yeah. is what you do. That's, that's, yeah. That's like a perfect laboratory. Yes. You know, it you is. Had, yeah. you had each mean, other. Yeah. And because we're coaches, you know, we're able to, um, and, and I, I know that therapists can do this too, but there's a big difference between being a therapist and being a coach. And one of them, at least from our point of view, is that we can share our own story. People know who we are. They know the struggles that we have uh, because we share those openly when it's appropriate as a part of our coaching sessions and mm-hmm. talk about what, you know, what it what it took for us to get through that. Yeah, no, that's I think that's exactly right. In my experience, since I'm also a coach, it's like what we what we bring to the coaching relationship is such an important part of the healing mm-hmm. process. So it's really almost, I would say, mandatory that we've done that work ourselves so we can show up, right. you know. Yes, I, I would say it's, it's that we are doing that work because it's never really done, right? Oh, that's true, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so we're ongoing doing that. Yes, it's, yes, it's an ongoing process, definitely, definitely. But I think that's just, um, it's remarkable that you guys kind of found each other like that. You know, it's it's just such a um, it's not an accident for sure. <laughs> right. Well, we, we think if this yeah. is the universe has sort of delivered yeah. this to us and we had the presence of mind to recognize it when it was given to us. And and I think that's yeah. the that's one of the lessons here, at least for me, is that remaining open and listening for what you know, what however you want to describe that higher spirit, that that universe idea. Um, what it has in store for us and and making choices yeah. after listening and considering so yeah yeah and just and just to be aware that that we do have choices you know to me that's like the first step in anybody's journey if you will it's yeah. like bringing that awareness to it that that we have that choice and it's all you know what, what we put into it yeah and 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 i think that that the first couple that came to us that kind of landed on our lap um and they're the ones who asked can we hire the both of you and Jim's just yeah, they're, like they're the what? ones who told us we should go into this, this anyway we we spent a um a weekend with them in their guest cottage we had them maybe going to Florida so so all the all, all the things lined up and after our weekend with them they said 
uh, this is your divine responsibility. Yes. <laughs> so, so it was reinforced by by what the what, what the couple saw. Yes, that's always nice to get that external reinforcement to your internal guidance, isn't it? Yeah, because right. our, our unconscious mind, you know, wants that evidence, right? And and so it seems like you had it pretty quickly on in, in this part of your career. Is, that's wonderful. And, and you know, I, I just want to add something. Um, you probably have viewers that are discouraged with online dating and the apps. Just I just want to let them know we actually met on a dating app. Yeah. We we met on match. <laughs> So, so there is, there is hope, hope out there <laughs> if people, people would just be patient about it. Um, and yes. we know it's really yes. frustrating. You know, there's scammers out there and all that. So, so. Right, right. There's a certain percentage, but, but I agree with you that I've known um, many people who have, who have had successful relationships uh, start, uh, start with an online dating app. So th this is kind of a, a question that, is related as sort of a personal question because somebody I know, it just started a relationship recently and it was, it started online. And I was wondering if, if you, do you only coach couples together or do you start with one of the individuals in the couple? Ah, that's a good question. Um, we, well, for individuals that are in the dating process, we would coach them as what we would refer to as somebody who's single, but looking for a relationship, right? So, but if we're talking to a couple, the dynamic can be such that, well, first of all, we cannot take sides, right? I mean, as, as a couple coaching a couple, we have to remain neutral at all times. So if it becomes necessary that we break out into either two-on-one -on -one or one-on-one -on -one sessions with one member of the couple, the goal would be that whatever was discussed or revealed in that would be revealed when we come together again with the whole couple. So there is no secret uh, mm -hmm. anything. So so that's that's part of the, 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 the way that we ensure that, um, that we aren't uh, sort of taking sides, but it has, you know, it, from time to time, it does make sense to to do that, to break out and to work with an individual in the couple. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we that's also great. Work with, yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, yeah. We also work with the individual in front of their partner. That's that's the more common method, and and that is extremely powerful. And the reason is is that you're doing this deep work with one person, but the other person is right there witnessing it and reacting to it. And, uh, and we check in with them uh, as a part of this process. And it can be really profound for them to discover what's really going on with the partner they love. That is Instead of so... hearing it secondhand, oh yeah, we had a good therapy session, you know? Right. What did you talk about? Well, I don't know. Lots of stuff. Well, you know? <laughs> so just to give you an example, procrastination is something that happens in most people's lives, right? There's a little bit of procrastination and then there's extreme procrastination. And then when there's a pattern that ends up affecting the relationship, okay, it's not just about saying, well, if you would just do that as you promised, you wouldn't have a problem. We have to go keep digging deeper. What happened in childhood that is having them afraid to do something that they're supposed to do? And invariably, there's always something, you know, that part of them that's stuck on the playground when they were bullied and, and maybe they try to do something and they were shot down. So all of those memories we unconsciously bring into our romantic relationship, especially if the partner is doing something or is speaking in a way that is remotely like, whoa, oh my gosh, the way she is speaking, whoa, 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 whoa. It feels like my control mother. Yeah. yeah right. And they may not even know it's because they are reacting to because of an old wound. So this is why we have to unpack it. You know, they may like, oh, God, stop already. And they don't want to engage in talking through it because yeah. it, it doesn't feel good. So we have to unpack all of that. And, and also, in like, especially in the sexual arena, 
you know, the couples we've been working with are a lot, they've been married a long time. And if you have years of resentments that have not been healed, especially the women, the women don't want to be touched. They have no interest in intimacy. So we have to unpack all of that before we even address the intimacy yeah, issue. And it's, and it's about safety almost always. It's about a feeling of safety and what does safety look like and why is it that you don't feel safe? And one of the things that happens in these sessions is um, we will be working with these couples and they'll have conversations with us that they can't have by themselves. And what happens is um, they will come back the next week and they haven't been able to talk about any of the intimate things that they had talked about the previous week until they get back again, you know, so they kind of save it up because they know it's a safe place and that we have the framework that allows for, for them to, to do this in a, in a way that doesn't really trigger their partner. Mm, that's so important. That is really, yeah. it's wonderful. And uh, the way you're describing that, I can just visualize it. Um, yeah. And there's so, you know, there's so much, uh, there is a big spiritual element to IFS and uh, maybe it would be, would it be okay to sort of explain IFS a little bit? Wait. Yeah, uh, I was going, I was going to ask you to do that. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, so IFS is a model that was developed by Dr. Dick Schwartz um, 35, almost 40, 40 years, years ago. ago. Yeah. yeah. And In it has, it has been, um, and initially, it was rejected by the psychotherapy community, but Dick too persisted. Woo -woo, you know? Yeah, it was too far out there because it held the following. This is the nature of the model. So the model holds that we are a collection of subpersonalities, that there are uh, parts within us that, um, that range from sort of regular role, everyday parts, to parts that have taken on really extreme roles. And... Some of those parts are wounded child parts. And typically when a part is taken on an extreme role, it's to protect one of those wounded child parts. Okay, so th that's, that's kind of the nature of it. And it's all about getting to the protectors and understanding why they do what they do. And they might do things like alcoholism, or they might do things like, you know, angry outbursts or depression or any of the things or procrastination. That, we, or that, we've, that we've pathologized in our society. Those are considered uh, just their parts, right? Um, and their parts executing a strategy that's outdated or ineffective, but they don't know that. They have your best interest in mind. So that's the ideas of parts. And then the other really important component of it is the spiritual element, which is there's a higher self. And there's a higher self there that has energy to heal all of those parts if the protectors will allow it. And that's the process of IFS is helping to develop a relationship between that client's higher self and their parts and with their partners, higher self and parts. And that energy of higher self is much bigger than any one of us. It's also tied into this idea of, of a greater uh, being or energy or however you'd like to describe that. And I, I know this must sound very familiar because I, I, I believe that shamanism shares many of these same ideas. And mm -hmm. that's not an accident. This was actually, this, is, this model was developed yeah. in part from shamanistic practices and beliefs. Mm. And, uh, and yeah. that's one of the things that I think that, that is so beautiful about it. It's, it's kind of a blend of, of sort of the, the best of um, from a number of areas. Yeah. Do you ever have any difficulty having clients um, connect with their higher self initially? Or how, if, they, if so, how do you handle that? I'll be curious. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, there, there are clients it, and clients you, usually it's it's um it's the get the guys so like what what do you what what do you mean because there's there because most of most men are wired to think logically right well what do you mean my higher self so if they can't really connect with that there's a technique in the in the internal family systems model where we do direct access which means which means we're talking directly to the person's part. Um, Instead of inviting the person to talk to their part themselves, right? Yeah. That's, so that's true. I forgot idea. about that. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but it, it it does happen where it's harder for some people to access their higher self, the energy of their higher self, than others, uh, because they're so um, strongly protected. Is the way that we would think about that is that their protectors are so strong that they're not trusting that it's safe to defer to higher self. And that's one of the things that's interesting about this model is that your higher self is only able to come into the picture if your protectors allow it to do so. Um, so it's a question of whether the protectors trust your higher self enough to let your higher self drive the bus um, or that they're gonna grab the wheel and continue to drive the bus. So it, that presents some interesting challenges as you know, as, as we're in these sessions to, um, and, and as Emily said, direct access is one of the techniques to be able to speak to the parts directly rather than inviting the client with their self energy to speak from self to their own parts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder if in this case also, I just thought of this, how important it is for us as coaches to be able to make those protectors feel safe even before they, you know, start connecting with their higher self, maybe. Absolutely. That's the whole process. I mean, we spend, we spend entire sessions doing nothing but trying to make those protectors feel safe. And um, yeah, so it's, it is the key to getting anywhere is first understanding what their agenda is, what their fears are, what they're trying to accomplish to the benefit of the person, right? I mean, because they always have the best interest of the person in mind. They just misguided on how they're going about it. That's all. Yeah. But once you understand that they have their best and you acknowledge them and validate them, uh, it, it becomes a different kind of conversation. They're suddenly more willing to open up to you and share with you what's really going on with them as protectors. And then, you know, ultimately, you know, it comes to earning their trust, whether it's us as the therapist figure uh, the coach uh, earning their trust enough for them to share this or preferably uh, enough trust with the self energy of the client. So I, I, I think that it's probably best illustrated with more of a direct um, example. I know sometimes when we talk about these theories, yeah, like people are like, what, stuff. what are they talking about? <laughs> so for example, um, in many relationships, there's uh, when things go awry, there's anger that, arises yeah, right so let's say yeah so so let's say dick and jane you know dick is like i'm so angry at her you know for doing that it's just like she shouldn't be there so when he's like in that energy he is blended with anger he is being anger and and let's say it's like would you would would you mind having anger like separate out from your body and and look at it in front of you what do you mean look at it in front of me? That makes no sense. I'm just angry. It's like, okay, so in that sense, um, we can't we can't unblend him from the anger so that he, as His the higher curious self. higher self, can yeah. look at it. So in that sense, one of us has to say, like, okay, all right, it's fine. So so what's the what's the hope of so you get angry when your wife does does X? Okay, what is the hope of this angry part? What are you trying to accomplish by being angry? Um, so you're talking just directly to him um, as, to as an, part, yeah, yeah. To, to his, because he's being his part. So, so, okay, anger, what are you trying to accomplish by doing that? Okay. And what are you afraid of if you did not get angry at your wife? What are you afraid is going to happen if you didn't? Okay. Then what? Okay. Then what? So we keep healing. And, and so they're still getting the answers um, in that direct access way. And we may have to do this a few times before the client's like, oh, okay, now you want, okay, now you want me to pretend my angry part is in front of me. All right, I'll just, I'll take that red stuff devil uh, to represent my anger. All right, well, how, what do you, what do you want me to yeah, and have a yeah. conversation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah now that's that. very, very, very effective way of doing it. Well, I think we're just about out of time, you guys. I know it goes by fast, this 30 minutes. It goes by very quickly, yeah. Yeah, so I just want to say thank you again for being on the show and for sharing all of this 
wonderful, wonderful information. And I look forward to seeing you in person someday. Yeah. Thank you, Katie. Thanks. Thank it's been a real you. pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. And thanks to all of our viewers for watching. And we'll see you the next time. Namaste.